Greetings to another video. Today's video is going to be all about the differences between an Audax and a Sportif. Uh, because I felt like if you want to enter any events this year, then it would be good to kind of know the main differences between the Audax and the Sportif. So you know that I have ridden many a Sportif and definitely many an Audax over the past five years that I've been on YouTube. So you've seen a lot of those. Um, and I'm also taking part in Ride London um, this week, which is sponsored by Evans. And yeah, I just thought I would share some of the differences because I love doing events and I equally love doing Audaxes. So I thought I would try and share and try and encourage you to give a Sportif or an Audax a go because they are amazing. And great for motivation, I think, for training as well. Like I talked about motivation, but I think having an event or an Audax or something in mind is a really good way of, you know, getting you outside and getting you meeting fellow lovely cyclists. So yeah i reckon let's talk about the main differences so the first main difference between the audax and the sportif is whether they are supported or not so a sportif for example is supported it's a fully supported event so uh you arrive at the sportif you, you go through the start line and yeah, around that route you'd be given water and food and there's paramedics on hand whereas an audax is kind of the opposite so you set off and you have to get your own food, your own drinks, um, and you're fully self-supported. So some old axes though that are like maybe 600k sometimes offer like overnight accommodation and potentially food. Um, but yeah, that's only on the really long ones. If say for an, a day event, a day old axe, um, you're not gonna get that. You'll get the route, um, but you have to navigate that route. And again, with a sportif, you generally have got markers on the road telling you which way to go. So that is the main difference, that a Sportif is going to be supported and an Audax is not. <laughs> so yeah, that's something to bear in mind if you are looking at doing an event. Um, I think the next thing to look at is distance. So this is very generalised, but Sportifs are generally shorter than an Audax. So Sportifs are around, ones I've done, are around 100 miles, 160 kilometers, um, whereas an Audax can start from 50 kilometers up to 100, 200, 300, 400, 600 k, 1000 k, 1200 k, and 1400 kilometers. So they that is a big, big difference. Although the Mallorca 312, which is 312 kilometers, is kind of the one that sits in the middle because it is a supported event, but it's a longer distance. So if you wanted one that was kind of in the middle, that's a really good one to go for. So yeah, that's another difference. If you wanted to do something that was a little bit shorter um, and supported, then go for a Sportif. If you wanted potentially something shorter and unsupported, then go for an Audax. So yeah, that's those. And then we get on to cost. So Sportifs are more expensive, obviously because they are supported. You've got people there people giving you food people giving you drink and obviously you're consuming that so that's not going to be cheap um so i think this i think how much did i pay for fred Witten? i think it was maybe 60 pounds i think they're generally from anything from maybe 10 15 quid up to maybe 60 70 pounds depending on the event audaxes are anything from four pounds up to maybe 25 maybe 50 if you're doing a really long event um as in like a multi-day event. So that's another thing to consider, depending how much your budget um, stretches to, that's another thing to consider. Um, yeah, but I guess you've got to look at, even though they are more expensive, you do actually get more from a Sportif because obviously a lot of the times the roads are closed as well. I'll get onto that in a second. Um, but yeah, the roads are closed, so obviously that's gonna take a lot more kind of organization than, a, than an Audax where it isn't. In fact, I'll just talk about it now. Yeah, generally Sportifs are on closed roads. Um, all the ones that I've done have been on closed roads, whereas an Audax is not. You're just going out any day of the week and there is traffic there. So that's another big difference. If you are someone that doesn't really like navigating around a lot of traffic, then a Sportif is a great, great way to get out, ride with other riders and not have to contend with any traffic. So that's another difference. Um, another thing that I think is different between them is the atmosphere. So the atmosphere on a Sportif is a lot bigger, it's a lot more, like there's music banging, there's like so many more people, like so, so many more people. Um, 
and there's like stalls of different different brands normally um, different cycling brands um, and it's really good it's like really I don't know what the word is like I don't know, fun. <laughs> it is fun. And whereas an Audax, equally as fun, but very different. So there's generally, I'm trying to think, maybe 20, depending on which Audax you do, anywhere from maybe 10 up to maybe 50 people doing um, that Audax. So it's a lot quieter, it's a lot more laid back, should I say, at a start. So again, it depends what you want. Do you want something that's all like, you know, bright lights, music, or do you want something that's quite laid back and quite understated? So that's what the Audax is. Um, and then the last thing I guess we will chat about is the people and how I personally perceive these events. And this is just my opinion. Um, on Sportives, I find that people are a lot more concerned with the time it takes to complete an event, especially on like the Fred Witten, for example, and the ATAP. People are going they're, they're they're classing that as their like big event of the year and they want to do a good time on it where and i guess as well there's also a lot more um fancy expensive bikes that's this is just my opinion but i've it's a lot more i don't know not com yeah maybe it is a bit more competitive um whereas audaxes obviously you want to get back in the set amount of time but generally people are a lot more laid back and anything kind of goes on an Audax, whereas Audax, like anyone, people on bikes, people on penny farthings, for example, there was one guy on a penny farthing, people on hand bikes, um, whereas, yeah, I guess that's another difference. So it depends. If you're wanting to go and just have a really steady ride, I'd go for an Audax, whereas if you're wanting to go and train towards something and really, like, smash out a time, I guess you can do that on an Audax. I've, I've done it on an Audax. Whereas I think sportives are have that competitive edge, so I guess that's again, it depends what you want to. But equally, on, like sportives and stuff like with the Fred Witten, there were people good in it, and I was just like just doing it as as like a steady ride out. I was I wasn't smashing it by any means at all. Um, so it's completely up to you. I'm just giving you my experience of of what they are like generally, generally speaking. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to compare between the two. Um, I don't know, I I personally like both and I, I feel like they both have really good positive um, things for them both. Like I really do like doing both of them. I'm trying to think of anything else on the top of my head. No, I don't know. I guess it's going to be what you prefer. Do you want to do something that is louder and um, close roads, costs a little bit more money? Um, um, there's a lot more people or do you want something that's a little bit quieter where you are literally you know on your own means you're not supported in any way then go for the Audax but I think there's room for both I love doing both and I'll continue doing both so I reckon that's it for this video let me know if you've signed up to any Audaxes or any Sportifs this year um I've done a lot so I've got a few more to do as well which is very exciting I'll talk to you more about them um soon I will be filming Ride London from, that's on Sunday. So in fact, if you want to follow me on Instagram, which is at Katie Kukabura with a one on the end, I might be doing, well, I'll be, I'll be sharing stories of me traveling down there and doing, getting all my bike and stuff ready for the Sportif. Um, but I potentially will be doing a Facebook, um, not Facebook Live, an Instagram Live on those as well. So give me a follow and you will be notified of that. I think that's pretty much it for this video. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next video.